BlackBerry has launched its latest attempt to claw back market share in the ultra-competitive smartphone sector against the titans of the industry like Apple and Samsung. This afternoon in London, it launched a passport. What it hopes will regain its, its share of the pocket of the workers out there who have traditionally used its BlackBerry devices for their batteries and for their reliability. This one is very, very focused on, on what we call the power of professional. Um, the company, since John Chen has come in uh, last fall, has gotten very focused on, in many ways, our, our roots. Let's, let's go to the folks that are very work focused, productivity focused, they need a device that really helps them get a lot done, powers them through an entire day. Uh, something that provides you know, easy access on, on the screen to get their work done. In fact, just try to play to those strengths. It's created a larger screen for those people who used to squint at the small thing above their, uh, their keyboard. But at the same time, it's actually kept the keyboard in order to maximize its, its heritage in that sector. So the keyboard really just does help you move faster uh, and get more done, but it's also touch enabled. So a lot of us are used to screens and we're swiping actually on the screen. Now you can actually do that on the keyboard. Mm -hmm. So you're not taking up space on the screen. You're not getting the screen dirty, et cetera. You can just you know, go ahead and navigate your way using the, using the keyboard. Also, it's brought in a suite of new software which will allow people to more easily look at documents, Excel spreadsheets. Doctors can look at x-rays on this device as well. However, the big problem is probably how it looks. It is actually exactly the size of a passport, which doesn't sound too bad, but when it goes into the pocket, it doesn't quite feel as smooth and as, as, as elegant as perhaps the latest smartphones. They make a big play of this, of course. So, you know, why a square? Turns out a square, in what we've introduced, is it is the optimal uh, size for reading. So it's literally almost the same as like an e-reader. Uh, it gets you 60 characters across instead of 66. Um, which would be the optimal e-reader size. So you can just see a lot more and literally make decisions more quickly and you don't have to navigate so much to see a full web page or, or an image. It's all right there uh, on the device. They say it's not a typical rectangle. They say it's different from your Apple or your Samsung, which is true. It is very different from that. And I think it will be polarizing in that extent. I think for your average uh, office worker who wants to maybe put this down on the table when they're doing their work, it will draw gasps of amazement at the beginning. I'm not sure over time it will be necessarily the device that they will want to keep using. We shall see, however. I think a lot of people will be turned off from the size of it. Some people will be quite excited by it, particularly having to use their smartphones when they come to work to squint down at the emails and, and Excel spreadsheets as they do at the moment. So I think at the time being, it's probably a niche product in a relatively small market for enterprise. Over time, however, you can see them maybe entering the shops and grabbing people's attentions a bit more than perhaps their last range did. Daniel Thomas, Financial Times, London.